Good afternoon. So it's a Sunday, lazy Sunday. And I've got a couple of jobs that I wanted to do. The first of which is what this video is about. So on the wheel arches, the Jensen Healy, the, the Healy itself is a box construction. So it's a box chassis and it's got body panels attached to that box. So underneath all this lovely curvy exterior, it's just a big steel box really with the wheels on it. However, as a consequence of which, I'll show you. Ooh. Inside the wheel arches, they have to have panels. Well, as in these things to stop muck and stuff getting behind the panels into the joins and getting behind here into all this trough and then getting stuck in there and then rotting it all from the bottom out, and rotting all the sills and all that. My problem is, though, that it doesn't matter how I wasn't able to get these to fit perfectly. And I wasn't, I made these and, well, yeah, I didn't do a good enough job of it. So my plan is... I've already tried to clean that out as best I can. So the plan is to get some uh, preventative measures to stop that happening. I could make them bigger, but in order for me to... Well, actually, yeah, I could do. But my plan is, because there's still this lip up here for the bonnet, and it can all get... <coughs> and they can always make sure you've got your mouth open when you're doing stuff like this. Do you know what I mean? That's the link for, for this onto the bonnet, right? It's all in round here, so I don't really want that. So my plan is to make a bit of a, a sill that will go just over the wheel. Not the full, I'm not too bothered about all this, but it's just to cover those joins and to sit flush against this rim. And I want to do this side and that side. I've already done the back, which I'll show you in a second. Hang on. So you can't see very well because I did it a while ago. But you can see it completely covers everything and there's no way anything can get behind that. And it saves those body panels. So that's my plan. That's my plan today. I'm gonna to measure out some of these and cut a new set for the front. So yeah, you know the, you know the drill guys. Right, get the kettle on. And uh, I'll start measuring that while you're doing that. See you in a bit. Hopefully now I can show you what I mean. So you can see that that gap is much closer, but I'm more concerned about here. This is where I want to stop it getting in, really. And then there's that gap up here, remember, is about here. So as long as I can stop, I'm only going to put a couple of retainers in here, just a couple of self-tappers, just to make sure that I can take this out whenever I like, and it'll only take me a couple of screws, and that I can clean it all off. And so it's just a bit of an inspection, like a like a weather panel, really just to save on those body panels. But no, I'm happy with that. I'll go and do the other side now. Oh, right, the good dot com. Oh. Right, well, you're probably wondering why. Why are you doing this, Frank? Where's my pencil? Well, because, so the, the way the car was designed like that, that box frame, but with panels bolted on, it was designed that way for a reason. So that if it was in a fender bender or you had a bit of a ding, you could just replace one panel. You didn't have to cut parts of the body out or anything like that. So the chassis of it is a monocoque shell. So there's no chassis. It's just a steel box, which is like a chassis and a body all in one. Um, but the only caveat to that today is that one of those body panels is 600 quid now. I mean, yeah, you can find them varying degrees of condition um, but for a good one yeah you're talking mm, mucho expensive now my plan originally was to get a cast of each of these body panels and then I could start you know printing my own a little bit really but the problem there is if I cast the panels for this car they'll only ever fit this exact car 
every one of these is different in its own slight varying little way so I thought eventually maybe I might make fiber class panels for it but I thought it's a lot of work and plus with the price of everything now it's skyrocketed the price to make them isn't that much like fiberglass moulds but the the cost for the resin to pour in to make the actual um what's it called the blank or whatever it is to make the actual original mould to cast it off yeah wowie so my idea is to try and preserve as much as I can and keep what I've got going for as long as I can I'm cutting the wrong bloody side there oh no I'm not oh yeah I am no I'm not no I'm not so yeah I've measured this against the other side the one that fits and it fits the other side, just about a bit of jiggery pokery, bit of magic, do you know what I mean? But yeah, it will fit. So I'm going to cut this, use this as a template for the other side, so it saves me having to up and downy, up and downy, like you just saw. Ow! Oh, ow! Oh, the weather is absolutely beautiful today. Um, and if you've seen one of my last videos on the previous video, I've just broken the new cam and tappets in for this. I'm wanting to, I'm waiting to put new oil in it, however, I'm waiting for a new thrust washer for the uh, sump nut, bolt nut, sump plug. Otherwise I'd have that in and have it going and I'd be using it now. But it's supposed to be really nice, the weather's supposed to be absolutely beautiful all week. So hopefully it should come, or I might just use the, the see the thing is if I use the old one and put oil in it, how am I going to take that out to swap the washer around? I'm not, am I? It's not going to happen. I've seen people putting hoovers on the... Yeah, I'm not I'm not even going there. Not even... No, I'm not. Not a chance. Oh, I'll show you this um, material, actually, while I'm here. Uh, I don't know what this is called, so I need your help, right? Because I've only got a limited amount of this. And my dad used to have miles of it rolled up. It's like a plastic, white hard plastic on one side, and then on the back it's like fabric backed. It's like square, that's how thick it is. Can you see that? Yeah, there you go. It's like a fabricy back, and it's like a shiny plastic underside. Well, top side, and then a fabric underside, yeah. If anyone knows what this is called, and where I can get it, please give me a shout. It's bloody useful stuff. Have I cut them in? Oh. I've cut them exactly the same. Rather than opposites, I've cut two for one bloody side. Right, start again. Start again. Come on. So while I'm down here, I've just finished off the other side. I thought I'd have a look at the bearings, the wheel bearings pack them properly just see how they've been getting on because i changed those a couple of years ago i just thought it'd be worth it while i'm in here take them out give them a repack and then uh, tighten them up properly so i'm doing that while i'm down here after this i've got the brake lights to fix it's only working on one side it's, for some reason it's a bad electrical problem on a classic car who'd have thought but yeah usually there's a Crap Earth. I'll show you when we get round there. The, the design's a bit, yeah, non-optimal. So, um, yeah, this, then that. So the bearings on these are pretty simple. They're just two pieces of, well, two washers that push like a, a cone bearing into them. What are they called? A needle bearing. Oop. Get this out, get me rag out. So underneath here, loads of this. There's a bolt, there's a nut covering, which is sort of like a retainer cover, where you put the, you tighten the bolt up and then you put the cover on, put a split, thin, split pin through it, that holds it all together. So let's have a look, which way is that? That is that way. Oh, fiddly stuff. Oh, 
incorrect use of a chisel, I might like to add. Sorry, Dad. Come on, machine. She's a coming. Lovely. All that is is just a split pin that the end has broke off, obviously. Classic. Put that in there. Now this is just a castellated retainer. You can see the little slots there, which is where the split pin goes through and it holds it, holds it still. Because this nut on here, I'll take it off to show you, should not be tight as balls. It should go on tight until it snugs up and then you loosen it off a little bit put the nut back on and then it holds it all together. So I've put some good grease on, it seems to be, um, it's like high temperature grease I've put on there. the washer Ooh. and here's the bearing now all it is is a needle bearing that sits it gets sandwiched in up against the race like that and then it turns and that's what the wheel turns on now it could use packing a little bit I'll show you how I pack these which is I'll get a bit in the palm of my hand like that and then I'll get the get the bearing itself so you see that gap where the needle roller needles are and I'll just scrape it in like that. And I'll go round and I'll keep pressing it through. Get a bit more grease on there. Until you see it coming through the other side. Happy with that. And then I'll give that a turn. And then I'll do it again. I'll keep building that grease up into there. Ooh. Oh no, that's not what we want. What is that? Oh, that's a split pin. Whoops. <laughs> Go back in there, please. It's very messy, so I like to wear gloves. I've only just started wearing gloves. Game changer. Oh, I highly recommend it. I haven't worn, I haven't been, I've never worn gloves. Never used to do it. But yeah, what a fool I have been. You need a pack of them, though, because they do break quite easily. But if you get a good set, right, that is chocker in there. Look at all that coming out. Great. So that can go back on. It feels good as well. I had a feel of it. It doesn't feel gritty. It's still very smooth. Rathergood.com. I'll get a load on there. Get that back in. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. And then the nut. Like I said, it goes all the way back, all the way on. So you can snug it up tight with your fingers and then you come off a little bit. You'll see, because when the castellated nut goes on, these splines stop you putting it on too tight. So when it's just about right, you have to come off a little bit so that you can get the split pin in through to lock it off. So I'll do that now and then I'll get on with the back with the brake lights. Before I do that, I forgot to put the washer back on. I know, I know, I know. I'm glad you shouted out. Because, yeah, I forgot about that. Wash it on first. Wow. Yeah, could I get it in covered in muck first? That'd be great. Great. So here we are. So the bulb, well, it was an easy diagnose, the bulb's gone, so 
it's an easy fix. But the bulb sits in there, and then that clasp fits into the housing, like, well, you can see already, it's a bit awkward. Right, there we go. Your earth is here, and that earth, the whole of that unit, so the earth for the bulb goes through these bayonet fittings and makes contact there. That's usually the main main fault there. If you're getting lighting problems, it's to do with the earth joining either there or to the body. But luckily I don't have to faff around with any of that because the bulb's popped. Lovely jubbly. Last time. the side right. hopefully that's fixed it new fuse couple of bad earths couple of shit connections <sighs> I hate it how do you turn this light? There you go. Right, final break light test.